osai Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, this happens not to be my first time in Wafbeck. I've been participating physically, and that's my corner. That's that's. Let us pray. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we ask that you come amidst us and glorify yourself. In this service, we ask that you make for yourself a great name and be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. We are looking at the power of the mercy of God. Turn your Bible quickly to the book of Psalms 25. Psalms 25. The power of the mercy of God. Psalms 25, we'll take verse 7 as we set the coordinates for our navigation. He said, remember not the sins of my youth nor my transgressions. The part B aspect of the verse is my concern. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord, according to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness, O Lord. Seeing that I'm not the only minister in this session, my responsibility is to facilitate a prayer burden so that we can gather around that burden in a moment and that body is going to be the transport system that God will use to take us to the place we need to be in order for us to maximize our fellowshipping this morning. The psalmist said in the part B aspect of the scripture that I just read, it's according to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. Now, it's, it is suggestive of the fact that the mercy of God in his administrative activity has the capacity to occasion God's remembrance, to draw God's attention to several things uh, that from our own perspective may seem that God is not attending to. This psalmist is giving us a prayer body and we're going to glide on that tangent. Turn your Bible again to the book of Malachi chapter 3 as we begin a journey. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16 to 18. Malachi 3, 16 to 18. Then there that feared the Lord speak often one to another and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and taught upon his name. Next verse. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in the day that I make up my jewels, I will spare them 
as a man spared his own son that served him. I like the that last verse 18 there. Then ye shall return. Now, this scripture reveals what we call a spiritual ceremony. A spiritual ceremony is an activity that makes things go on record in the realm of the spirit. You see, we can be doing something in natural. It amounts to a spiritual ceremony if it attracts the attention of God and, 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 and occasions the scribes in the heavens to record that activity as something that God we need to bring into remembrance in order for him to execute his counsel in the days to come. That's a spiritual ceremony. Because these guys, the Bible says, they that fear the Lord, they, they speak one unto another, just like I, I visit your house and we begin to talk about um, some things and then the Lord now intercepts our discussion and the substance of our discussion are based on uh, several things that he inspires us to begin to say. The purpose for which I came to visit you has been left aside and God has, 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 has entered into our communication and he has given us words through inspiration to begin to say. And when we begin to speak those words, those words that he is inspiring us to say in that our natural conversation creates a platform or possibility for God to administer several things that he has in mind. He was just looking for earthly permission for heavenly interference, and that was why he orchestrated that arrangement. And the moment we begin to operate on that level, the scribes of heaven begin to record. So there's something that is happening overhead on the account of our activity, which we did not plan, but we stumbled upon because God inspired us and we were willing to yield to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He, he begins to create platforms in heaven. He creates a, a, a ground for God to be able to implement something in the days to come and a book of remembrance is open to that effect. Are you still with me? Don't worry, we'll go into details. But I'd like you to pick uh, those few concepts as we travel this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's a spiritual ceremony. On the account of the spiritual ceremony, God now has a platform to perform something. He said, there shall be mine, saith God, in the day that I make them my precious jewels. God had an intention that is captured within a certain day to administer an intent upon his heart. The activity that took place among the brethren that day created possibility for God to have the legitimacy to implement that which is upon his heart in the days to come. I pray that some things we will do here today will go on record in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember those days when we were still on campus. Our campus was ravaged by cult activities. And we began a regime of intercession to call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, we were asking heaven to come renovate our campus. And it came to pass one of those nights that we were given an instruction, a prophetic instruction. And we carried out the prophetic instruction as we were led, and it went on record in the realm of the Spirit. Everything, if we had known that heaven would be diligent to fulfill every aspect of what we uttered in the midst of that prophetic action that we took, we would have said many more things if we had known. But it went on record in the realm of the Spirit. And when we had graduated, so it means we're no longer we no longer had a hand in that which was recorded. God began to fulfill what he said to the very later. There was no aspect of the things we spoke 
that did not come to pass. God, and in order for God to encourage us, he fulfilled it according to the sequence of our speaking. So you will realize that what happened was an implementation of something that went on record. There are so many books that God makes reference to. We have the book of war. We have the book of covenant. We also have the book of remembrance. And in the book of remembrance, he will inspire you to do something that will go on record in the realm of the spirit and become a platform for which he can bring fulfillment in the days to come. Today, some things will go on record. Let us take a typical example of what I'm talking about. Then we'll see how it connects to the concept of the power of God's mercy. Before we can go into that layout, which is in the book of Genesis 18, we need to do a refresher course to, follow, to see a sequence of the move of God in, in the life of a believer. So I'm digressing to do a refresher course. Oh my God, my friend is here. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Hallelujah. John chapter 8. This is a refresher course, just to bring us up to speed with the things that we are going to be dwelling upon. In John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, please help me with that scripture on the screen. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. Next verse. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, Jesus was addressing believers. A number of Jews had believed on him, and he was addressing them to give them insight into how they can progress in their work with God. It says, if ye continue in my word, then you become what? My disciples. So we all begin as believers, and those among us that decide to continue in the word of God, to understand God's thoughts, to understand the principles by which God operates, to understand the chemistry behind the implementation of several mysteries in the kingdom of God, those ones will graduate to become disciples. And what Jesus was talking about here was not just a disciple, but a chartered disciple. So if you continue in my word, then you become a chartered disciple. A disciple that I will reckon with that indeed this one is a disciple. So there's a migration from being believers to becoming what? Disciples. And each of these levels are ecosystems that the grace of God has um, created possibilities for you to be sufficient in. You, you, you can decide to remain a believer. The grace of God in that space is sufficient to establish you um, in that reality. You can decide that I want to be a disciple. The grace of God is another realm in time. It's an ecosystem in God. Uh, the grace of God will be available to ensure that you are a chartered disciple and to function according to the realities in that ecosystem. The next level is the level of servants. It's when you have understood the ways and the workings of God, then you are conscripted to function in God's service. You begin to serve the will of God. Because you want to serve a spirit, you need to understand <laughs> uh, what can impress a spirit. I've, I've, I've gone through great efforts to try to impress my wife sometimes, and many times I didn't meet up. So, so 
what do you think can impress a spirit? A spirit will not say, okay, you, you actually tried. Huh. It's not just any spirit. We're not talking about a water spirit. We're talking about God, a king spirit. For instance, a native doctor can send the spirits that work with him in the shrine to go accomplish a mission. You, you can't send the Holy Ghost because he's a king spirit. He will only do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. So the, the, the issue here is, how, how can you really serve such a personality and such service will not be acceptable by him? You need to be a disciple first to know his ways before you can now serve him accurately. The Bible says, seeing that we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved, he said, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably and the texture of acceptable service is revealed in reverence and in godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. That last phrase there, it's not a fire that will consume you. That's not what it's saying. You will remember that at the end of this age, our works will be tested by fire. Yeah. Right? So the context here is service. Are you still with me? The context here is service. Every man's service to God, everything we did in the name of God, will be subjected to the fire test. It's a quality control test in eternity. And if you study your Bible in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, when Jesus made an appearance to John on the Isle of Patmos, you will notice that in the description of Jesus that he gave, his eyes were like a flame of fire. So the testing is instrument that we use, that will create the fire, that will test our works, is actually whether our works are within the perspective of Jesus. So if your works are not within his perspective, it will burn. In order for you to walk in a delicate kingdom like that, that cannot be moved, you will need to be a disciple first before you enter into service. And there are several things. Meanwhile, if you decide to remain in the disciple level, there's enough grace that can accommodate you there. If you want to go higher into the service level to serve a policy from the heart of God, and to implement God's will in your generation, there is also grace at that level that will sustain you. But it is a very, very sensitive line of activity. You will need to be equipped with an understanding of the nature of the personality that we are in league with. You will need to understand the principles by which he operates, the things that are pleasing to him. You can't do that in ignorance and expect to have an outcome. So the third level is the level of being a servant. John chapter 15. From verse 15. Quickly. This is a refresher course because we are going to, there is a certain scripture I want to introduce. It captures everything we are saying and then you give us a good idea into uh, what needs to happen to occasion a remembrance in heaven. It, this is Jesus speaking. And Jesus said, henceforth, I will call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord, what his Lord doeth. You see, in the, regime, in, 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 in the regime of service to God, we begin to become comfortable with God's instructions. All right? I'm talking about several things that God makes available to you that you need to accomplish, and God will starve you of the understanding of why so that you can become comfortable living by his instructions and not his explanations. Your understanding is going to be seriously unfruitful so that your heart can be tested. It's not a mind thing 
It's a hard thing for which we need to be disciple to operate that way. Now, you know, many of us need to understand before we obey. No, that's not the kind of service we are talking about here. Jesus gives us an insight into that kind of service. You don't need to know the details. All you need to know is the instruction. And many times, the circumstances, situations around that kind of service de delivery is not conducive. So you don't understand why it has to be like this. But your place is not to question the master. Your place is to obey even when it doesn't look logical. And when you have, are you with me? That's the, that's the realm of the servant. Go on with me. I've not finished that scripture. But I have called you friends for all things that I've heard of my father, I have made them known to you. So there is another level of friend. It is that level of friend that God brings you into the understanding, into the outworkings, into the intentions that he has. And Abraham is a wonderful example of a man that walked in that realm. Because Abraham was, he had three titles. He was the friend of God, he was the father of faith, and he was the father of many nations. In fact, he had so much stature that Jews, Christians, and Muslims claim him to be their spiritual ancestor. In view of the above, I would like us to look at a scripture that captures the activity of a friend of God. It's on the strength of his currency before God as a friend that he was able to operate in that capacity. Because when you become a friend of God, you are entitled to know what the Father is doing. Are you with me? You are not with me? There is an entitlement. You have an entitlement. Even God himself. We okay. Let's go. To Let's talk in scriptures. Genesis chapter 18. I'd like us to see the texture very clearly. Then we will now see how the prayer point will come up. As we begin to prosecute the prayer point, the things we are teaching now will begin to happen. Now, you see, that aspect, I, I actually don't need your amen for that aspect to happen. Even if you don't believe it will happen. No, the amen is not needed there. It's not. It's not needed. <laughs> amen. Are you with me in uh, Genesis? All right, let's do 19. Genesis. Okay, 18, sorry. Genesis 18, we'll begin from verse 17. But, but hold on. Each and every one of us has the potential to operate with God on that level of friend. So God does not have favorites. God only has intimates. And whether or not you become an intimate with God is dependent on the ecosystem you are willing to operate. So the experiences, the level of experiences and possibilities that are bound toward you is consistent with the ecosystem that you are comfortable with. Some people have, are, they are aspiring for very critical intimacy with God so that it will be impossible for God to do something within the scope of their jurisdiction as ordained by heaven without reaching out to them to give them insight into what God wants to do. At this point, these individuals have become um, ad co-administrators with God in his policy directions. So he will need to come and educate them about what he wants to do because they have a role to play in the implementation thereof. There are several privileges that are available at that level and I want us to see. Before we go studying an actual case when Abraham used his intimacy with God 
as a legal tender to occasion transactions, I would like us to see his credentials before God first and foremost. Genesis chapter 18. Please stay with me, stay with me. I know you are, you are not with me. Most of you are not. But I'm asking, stay. And the Lord said, this is God saying in 17, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? You see, because he's a friend of God, God is compelled. God had intentions to hide his counsel from him, but the guy had reached a level of stature in the spirit that, that occasioned God to... The idea was, oh, hide. Then he's not talking to himself, shall I hide? No. There's something I want to do, but shall I hide it? Next verse. This is his credentials. He said, seeing that Abraham shall surely become great. That's one. So every friend of God becomes great. And he, he becomes great surely. Mm. Do you still remember Isaiah chapter 53? He says, surely. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Surely. So every friend of God will surely become great. Give me my scripture, please. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed by him. That is Abraham's ordination in the administration of his purposes in the earth. He is ordained to become a channel of blessing. All right? Because God doesn't bless individuals. God blesses Abraham. The, the earth was willed to him. So the, the extent of blessing you walk in is consistent with how related you are with Abraham. Yes, and how for you to be entitled to blessing, it is Abraham's commodity. Are you with me? Yes. Or oh, you are not with me? Okay. Since you are not with me, we'll, we'll just leave it. We'll leave it at that level. You know, Jesus was called the son of Abraham. Jesus was called the son of David. Jesus was called the son of man. Jesus was called the son, the seed of the woman. Jesus was called the son of God. Those were the five titles that Jesus walked in. Now, why was he called the son of Abraham? Have you sat down to think? Because what we call redemption began with Abraham. There were great men that had risen before Abraham came upon the scene, but God never started the initiative of delivering foreign, fallen man until Abraham. It was Abraham that was an idolater that God now called by an act of his sovereignty to come out from among his people, from his kindred, from his father's house. Abraham, are you with me? If you study the book of Galatians chapter 3, you will realize that what God started with Abraham, he actually found adequate actualization with Jesus. Jesus came on the premise of the covenant that God had with Abraham, which includes all nations and all the families of the earth. The legal platform that authenticated what God began with Abraham and created a premise for organic salvation to find expression was all rooted in an economy of reality that God began to implement with that man called Abraham. So when we talk about blessing, it's in the book of Galatians 3 that we understand what blessing means. It has to do with the promise of the spirit. It has to do with, with the blessing of the privilege of being an, a, 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 an entity that the Holy Ghost will come and indwell. So you have access to the mind of God. You have access to the grace of God. You have access to the wisdom of God. That which is in God, you can access it because you have the Holy Ghost not just coming upon you to occasion an activity, but dwelling in you in, to give you an opportunity to be a partaker of the divine nature. 
So when we talk Abraham, we are talking the source. Talking source. God. So if, if we can't trace you to Abraham, you don't exist in this common world. Are you there? Now, so God intended him to be great. God intended him, every family of the earth, to tap from that which God would do in him. Yes, go on. Still talking about Abraham's credentials. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. These were the things that compel God. For I know him. Now that verse, verse 18, talks about his ordination. How pivotal he is in his agenda for the human race. And that one is an ordination. He didn't qualify for it. It was God that called him to become that. Are you with me? But verse 19 is talking about Abraham's personal credential. The testimony of his work with God. For I know him, the Bible says, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. It means that everyone that was under Abraham's authority was sentenced to operate in the way of the Lord. You don't have any choice. Whether you are from Egypt, you were bought with money. If you join his fold, you will be disarmed with, from your idols. You will renounce the spirits you, your grandfather had, And you will be compelled to walk in the way of the Lord. That means Abraham had been a disciple of God at a certain time. And he had learned the ways of God. And he had studied God, experienced God, made mistakes. God had disciplined him. And he had gained stature with God. His walk with God was now consistent to become a culture. Now, if you are 90 years old and you want to counsel your son, what will you tell him? If you don't have any work with God, you'll be, talk, you'll be, you'll be speaking at, like, like someone that read uh, sociology. Abraham was passing heritages. The impact of the encounters he had with God, he, the rebukes he received from God. It was now solid enough to become a culture. And he was, he, was, he was implementing that culture in his household. So the thing that will affect all nations, he first, before exporting it, he modeled it. And God acknowledged that in Abraham as one of the, his qualifications on his CV. So if somebody runs, is looking for food, and he runs into Abraham's compound, if you get there, you'll find the food, but you'll be compared <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> to walk in the ways of God. He said there's access here, there are possibilities, but when you come, the only requirement is that you will bow to Jehovah. And God had acknowledged that Abraham had that status upon the face of the earth and it, it, it was part of his CV. I'm just telling you the qualifications, that friendship level, the structure that is in it. it people, you work with people in your office for 15 years. They are still the way they used to be. You are not yet a friend of God. We are not doubting the fact that you are a believer. But what God is doing inside of you has not reached the level where it can become contagious where it can influence a system, influence a realm. It means that the move of God on your life is too minute to bring change in your context. So there are many things that God has in mind that he will keep away from you because of your level of civilization. Oh, you are in the business world, you don't know that you are first a disciple of Jesus, you are going there as a disciple of Jesus. Many of us get to places and you lose your identity. If that is still possible, it means you were not a disciple in the first place, but you are a believer. So when we look at the landscape of Nigeria, you will find a nation that has so many Christians, but we can't find God in government. We can't find God in the administration of our land. It is not because the sons of the bondwoman 
are so powerful, it is because most of us that are believers have decided to be domiciled in locations that, that are convenient for us. Because if you, are going in, if you are going to go into serving a certain policy in God, you will learn how to walk by faith. Oh, my. Oh, because God will not explain why. You say, my son, arise. Move. And when you ask, how will I? He shuts down. So your understanding is not, it's unfruitful. That's a venture that you will learn by applying your heart. You will know that in the economy of God and in the implementation of the purposes of God in the life of a man, the status of his, the alignment of his heart is a big matter. If God will land in your life, the airport, the tarmac is your heart. And if that harmony with God is not there, there is little God can accomplish through your vessel. Abraham had passed that test. Where he was now is that we have, heaven has taken notice of the fact that he is well structured in alignment with the government of God. And anything that comes into his space is compelled to bow down to the lordship of the master that he serves. That was his, his qualification. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. These were the things that made it impossible for God to hide something from Abraham because he had attained the status that has made him a critical factor in, of the implementation of the plans of God in the earth. So, this man is coming with all of that credential. He's coming with that stature and he's coming to interface with God. When you pray, are you with me? Your obedience is standing, you are, you are praying with your obedience. When you pray, you are praying with your consecration. When you pray, you are praying with your alignment. When you pray, you are praying with your sensitivity. What you have become in God will determine the outcome of that your interaction. Oh, maybe there's a deaf person here. And all of us are people of faith. But it's not all of us that can help that person. Because the things you are bringing to the table to pray with, to interface with God with, is not so powerful that can move the hand of God. You pray with everything that you have become in your work with God. That's why the effect of your prayer is different from the effect of my prayer. And Abraham was coming with all of that weight to negotiate for the destiny of Sodom. I pray that God will... You see, in Nigeria, we need men of weight. If we are going to break the rod of the Assyrian, we will need men of weight that can negotiate, that can get God to sit at the table of negotiation. It will take weight. Sometimes, you know what? <laughs> Hallelujah. A certain minister in my city, he was a friend of the late Archbishop. And he wanted to invite him for a meeting. He said, I will come on Friday and rest. I will preach on Saturday. I will rest on Sunday and leave on Monday. He said, the people are hungry. The people, he, said, he said, Pastor, what I can do in one hour, a hundred pastors cannot do it in a hundred hours. And he was not boast. He stature. See, don't, may the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> it's, it's a matter of stature. You, you can gather the whole of Orile for a prayer meeting. And what is achieved? When we accumulate all of the rank, the corporate ranking of that congregation is not anything near a certain man taking coffee. God can achieve more with a man sipping coffee than a, the whole Orile. <laughs> Abraham came with all of that stature and he came to God. Let us go to the negotiation table quickly. 
Not everybody can do this kind of one. Now, this is how Abraham started. Are, are you there? Verse 23. This is how it started. I, I, I'd like you to see the intelligence the man has gathered in his work with God. He, he knew where to punch God. This was the beginning of the negotiation. Said, and Abraham drew, drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? In my work with you, I have realized that you are a God of justice, of judgment and equity. It's part of your nature and you can't deny yourself. But I'm confused. Will you also destroy it? <laughs> now, I'm, in your work with God, what have you found that you can use and chain God and say, ah, were you not the one that I'm, I'm confused? <laughs> this, this is, this is, these are applications, deep applications of spiritual reality. Th you think you are gaining anything by remaining immature? Oh, you'll be a victim of transactions. You, you'll be a victim of transactions taking place overhead. I want to sit at the table where the matters are discussed. Oh my, I don't know that. I don't know about you. If God wants to visit your family, will He come to you? That's the question. You are a mere victim of the tra real transactions that take place. And if in your context, the elders are more yielded to darkness than you are in light, the shape of the land will look like darkness. May the Lord give you understanding. You see, will you also destroy the righteous and the wicked? And you got God there. We are going to do this kind of thing this morning. Hey. We wanted to, we bought it. There was a land. We bought, we acquired the land and wanted to build. And it's beside a market. So the drainage, the drainage of the government had, was compromised. It had fallen and it was flooding our land. So we had to build the drainage. We got workers and they began to work to break the previous one so that we can put up the current one. And as we were trying to do all of that, the workers came to me one morning and said, Oga, we know if you work again, no. I said, have you not been paid? They said, oh, no, not be money. Oh. They found a snake there. And in the culture of the people, when they want to establish a market, they establish it with a snake so that sales can prosper. It was that market that was, that snake that was living in the drainage. So it will determine when he needs sacrifice. You don't need to sacrifice to it. He knows who to collect and sacrifice. He, can, he has his own boot. His own, uh, what they call that thing in Lekki? Toe gate. He has his own toe gate. He administers it himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the workers now say, this one now, now pastor walk No be our own. Uh, then you will know whether you have gained stature enough. <laughs> May the Lord give you insight. <laughs> hey, you will, you will, your transaction stops at the end of your stature. Nigeria needs men of stature in this hour of need. In this day of Jacob's trouble, we need those. Oh my. The question this morning is, are you the one that is to come or should we expect another? Abraham came with spiritual intelligence. Will you also destroy the righteous and the wicked? Hey, he caught God there. Say, well, can you see, let me show you some symptoms. This is, he understood the courtesies of Reverence. Verse 27. Verse 30. Verse 32. Let's start with 27. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which I am but dust and ashes. See, he understands reverence. He reduced himself to, he said, Who am I to speak to you? 
Ah, if it's not that you have decided to show me mercy, can I even have this audience? I'm dust and ashes. So the fact that I'm talking to you doesn't mean I've changed my, my status, my rating in my heart. I know where I am. Mm. The guy kept God. God was in a hurry. He was even trying to cancel the possibility of informing Abraham about the matter. But this guy understands reverence. He trapped God. Ah! Hey. Go to the next verse. I say, show up. Verse 30. You still see him again. And he said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry. It's not as if God was angry. But the guy had worked with God enough to know when to put. When did you discuss with God like this? You just wake up and say, oh yes, all the angels in the neighborhood, I summon you. <laughs> you, <laughs> you have not gone close enough. That's why you are like that. Uh, yes, all the spirits around. I just came to say, I'm awake. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> he said, don't be angry. The fact that I'm talking and it seems as if I'm challenging you, that is not me. That is not me. I'm just, because you are here now, I, I want to take advantage. God was, <sighs> let's see again, verse 32. Oh, are you there? And he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak, but this once. Hallelujah. He kept God. Do you know what it means if Jesus walks into your room? What will you tell him? What you will tell him is what you learned as a disciple. If you don't have that age in your life, if you don't have service, you, because you are serving God, the object of the service is not the service. It's an opportunity for you to know him. Mm, it's an opportunity. And in the kingdom, service is greatness. When you have walked in service to a certain level, it, it, you, it becomes strange for people to serve you. You, you, you. you don't accept it. Because in the service, you have learned how to make obeisance. You have learned how to be poured forth as a libation. So all of you has gone down the cross. And the thing that lives inside of you is, is the opportunity to serve the will of God. Now, this discussion ended and the transaction made God concede and say, all right, if there are 10 people in Sodom, because of you, I will spare them. And Abraham went home. Now, let's see how they even departed. Okay, I don't want to take much of your time. There, there was a way they departed. When God now went to take inventory, Abraham's negotiation limit was still below the mark. It was not sufficient to administer any form of mercy. And God was righteous in destroying Sodom and Gomorrah because Abraham's negotiation limit was, was kept in the agreement. Are you with me? Turn your Bible with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 19. Quickly. Verse 27, and Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord, that same conference hall, where him and God negotiated. He went and stood there. And he looked, yeah, 20. And he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and towards all the land of the plain and beheld, lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. 29. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. That was not part of the negotiation. That is called mercy. Stay with me. You know the scripture I read, say, it said, according to thy mercy, 
Remember thou me. Mercy is the facility by which God can remember. He can be brought to notice on a matter and be compelled to act. This activity of God was not based on the negotiation. So if God were to be just, he would have destroyed Lot. But God decided to be merciful, which was not part of the agreement in order for him to save Lot. And the terminology that was used here is remember. It means God put several things on record on the book of remembrance and he was compelled to consider it that day. It was on the strength of the edge of mercy that Lot was delivered out of Sodom and Gomorrah. What God told me this morning is that I want to remember some people in this meeting. So rise up, rise up, rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Maybe you have been in a condition for, for such a while and it's as if there is no change, there's no intervention. It, it, we are going to pray for 10 minutes. We are going to pray for 10 minutes. And the mercy of God will occasion a swift remembrance. Amen. Lord would have died did they overthrow. But the Bible says God remembered Abraham and saved Lord. Lot would have been saying, you see, I know he will come. He came. He doesn't know that his coming had nothing to do with him. If he's left to Lot, the overflow should, should begin from his house. But the Bible says God remembered Abraham. There was a book of remembrance that was opened on the account of that transaction. And God, God had noted that even though this man has attempted, I'm going to open up a clause of mercy. Even though he did not request for it. I will open up a clause of mercy. And that clause of mercy that God opened is what led to the remembrance of Abraham. Oh! Remember me according to thy mercy. Oh my God. That's our prayer point. Remember me according to thy mercy and show me thy goodness for thy own sake. Somebody reach out right now. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. That during the course of this conference. You will remember families you will remember individuals you will remember nigeria remember me kabo seli mai takuma braski so sena makadula mateli as come and on shake it ali breko tu sasi ko patulama branta babo shake italia is coming so Makaboko teliskopela. The mercy of God will compel God to look upon you in your estate. The mercy of God will compel God to look upon you and rise up in jealousy to act on your behalf. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Saibali moski so samande bokoda lesko palamina akabeso silia temi shamo kobra marate iska meka bola akamesko belamina iko presko belesko belabuata. Oh my God, remember my family. Let the scourge, let the scourge come to an end. Let let the bitter scourge be stayed. Remember me, oh Father. I call upon your name that you will look kindly on me and show me mercy. I cannot hear your voice. 
it is time to cry to God remember me remember me remember me se convertia la mantalia a boba le cosqueto mantenimo racos cabalanta baboria e cobeza i e cobrante cobalata e coselimandelia e cocolima sacatala brata babocote braca sanda baboria braca scanimo codeba e braisco raco bocotalemo escope laitacama abranda baboco sele amakaya bosame raboseni akameno selabata branta baboria iscopela amakuria baba remember me Zebi Copela, Proscamena Zile, Abacusa Natelando, Abresco de la Telia, Semina Copehala, Abrasico Be, Mantaba Boria, Amagasa Labo, Remember me, Remember me, Osayato Cobe, Brasico Padua, Acapalatosque. Brande sobriato, acabo samen antelia. Oh, remember me, remember me, remember me, remember me, remember me. 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 Can you ask him to remember your family? To step into the terrain and reign. Set foot upon the land. Set foot upon the territory. Remember me. Kovesami nantale. Boroko masaba. Akaila bokora maseli. Oh, sami no tela mahantelia. In the name of Jesus. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember my family. Remember my family. Remember me. In the name of Jesus. There are two things I see in the realm of the spirit. I see a lady. When you were 13 years old. An angel of the Lord used to visit you. And it comes with the presence of God. You are saturated. Sometimes you shiver. You used to have those encounters. When you were 13. When you were much younger. And somehow. The encounter stopped. Not because you sinned. Not because you betrayed the law. The angel is coming to you now. Wait. No it's not, it's not an amen matter. He's coming now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said this morning you were going to meet this sister and the purpose for which you visited her many years ago, you will begin to fulfill from today. I ask, oh God, that you, you help me find her. That your hand might descend upon her from my left hand side to my right hand side. Let the presence of God come upon you yes to restore that which god began to do in your life 
so the hand of God comes now it comes stronger it comes stronger it comes stronger it comes stronger remember me remember me now listen there is an angel walking in this congregation and I see the angel of the Lord carrying a lamp a lamp and the Lord speaks to me there is someone here you are in the midst of a very terrible spiritual war a spiritual battle and it is family based you have been praying but there seems to be no change the reason is because you have been praying amiss this morning the Lord has sent the angels there is a lamp that is to be given to you it's a spiritual gift a revelational gift so that as you pray you will begin to see what you what you should pray about so that your prayers can be effective there is a deposit of the grace of God that is coming upon your life so that when that oh my God the hand of God comes upon you as, as the angel releases that gift it will come with the concentration of the presence of God one two three four five six Holy Ghost move he comes to give you sight you will no longer be blamed oh the hand of the Lord he comes stronger he comes stronger he comes stronger he comes stronger Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, move. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. If you are in this auditorium, maybe one of your ear, you were born deaf, or one ear, or one ear has lost hearing, or you hear better in one ear than the other ear. Let me see your hand up. Wave so that I can see. Wave. All right. Now the Lord wants to open that ear right now. Okay. Any? All right. Okay. Now watch me. Take this finger. Block the ear that cannot hear. Block it completely. Completely. Then I'll pray. Block it completely. Father, in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear your amen. I say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I rebuke the spirit of deafness. Deafening spirits be bound. Deafening spirits be bound. In the name of Jesus. I break your hold in the name of Jesus. Now I command you come out of the ears now in Jesus name come out of the ears now in Jesus name ear hear ear hear ear hear remove the finger you used to block the ear take this finger block the one that can hear block completely if you are close to them help them test that ear and the moment you can hear let me see your hand up if you can hear just wait I can't see you okay there's one there Now, wait, wait, wait. If you can hear, come. Can you come?
Just run out, run out, run out, run out. Run out. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. All right. Um, can you use a microphone? Let's let's hear her out. I have six minutes. There's a prayer I want to pray before I run away. Any microphone there? Can we hear them out? Remember me. Remember me. Now listen, 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 listen. I see in the spirit. I see in the spirit and uh, I see two lamps burning. And, and the Lord says, the Lord says, he wants to activate two prophets. Holy Spirit, I ask, help me find them. 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 All right, let's go, let's go. Yes. Who is with the microphone, please? Can you just, yeah. So, sister, no, don't give her. When I ask you to remove it, remove it. Yes? What happened to you? So I had to turn like this and then turn again and I, I could hear you without the ringing. Somebody shout hallelujah! Don't go, don't go, yeah? Quickly, quickly. Um, oh my. my left hair, I know you see her very well, but when you asked us to put her hair, um, her hand inside her hair, I did it and the lady beside me, when you asked somebody to help us to talk inside it, I could hear better. I could feel better than before. How long have you been in that condition? I remember I was very small when it started. All right, all right. Can you celebrate the Lord Jesus? Yes? Okay. I've struggled to hear with my right hair since 2016. 2016, that's how many years now? Okay. Okay, so 2019, I, so I, I went to an ENT, so they brought out an object. I was hoping that was going to solve the situation, but early last year, I started again. So when you asked us to block the air with, um, that we couldn't hear properly with, I did, and um, we should remove our hands. After you prayed, someone came and clapped, and I could hear properly. She could hear. Yes? I couldn't see her very well with my right ear. Okay. And when you said that we should place our hand inside our ears, and immediately I removed it, it just get cleared. It and just got cleared. Yes. Did you feel anything in your body? No, I just. You, you didn't feel anything. It just. just okay. Yes. Quickly. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. How uh, many years ago I received a blow on my ear? Ah. And I think I punctured my eardrum. Oh. So for over um, ten years now. It goes and comes back uh, after a while. And most times when I take my bath, I don't let water Touch enter into the ear. So okay. a few days ago, I was taking a shower and water entered. So I started feeling the pain and it started reoccurring again. But after the prayer, it feels better now. Hey, hallelujah. Yes? Yes, yeah. quick. quick. A yeah, few years ago in the night, I was praying. I just covered... I had an attack. Both ears cannot yell again. But during that prayer, I, was, I started hearing from my right hand ear gradually. But since that time, the left ear has not been hearing clearly. I will have to turn if I have to hear. But why we said that, I, while others are still out, I was still trying to connect to that spirit. Instantly, I began to hear louder than what I used to hear in the other one. Somebody shout hallelujah! time is up. The reason why I asked you to remain 
is because one of you there is an anointing that will come on you the only way the great one said I will know is that I will heal the person's ear and when I heal the person's ear I will anoint the person you are not aware but the angel is already there it's already there he's, he's touching that person he's touching the person Lord show me show me show me show me he's touching her already remember me father in the name of Jesus that one that you said oh my god 